Wherever you put the switch, if you're choosing high beam or low beam, the current will flow, let's say, to low beam, here, here, through this red, white. Remember, red is the base, white is the stripe. A general rule, go out here, go out here, and now what, what happens here? Current comes to a connection. That means the current will divide. Again, to a fuse, 10 amp, to another fuse, 10 amp, red, yellow stripe, red, white stripe. And it'll go out here. Where does it go to? You guessed it, a bulb. Low, low headlamp, low headlamp. One for the right, one for the left, obviously. Right, here, here. What's this symbol? We just went over it. A black Y, a black Y to ground. G means ground. So therefore, this switch accomplishes, when we put this in three to three, it accomplishes many things. Gives a B plus to the daytime running light module. Gives current flow to the parking lamps, which you want. Also activates the low headlamps. The three things. What happens when we put this dimmer switch, which they call it a dimmer, in the high position? Obviously, we're going to activate the high beam. Let's follow it. This position, this now will be, instead of here, it will be here. Current will still flow here, 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 high. Come out here of this combination light switch, B5, through a red and blue stripe wire. Go into this fuse box, fuse terminal. Now we're dealing with a fuse of number 5, 10 amps. Still less than 30 or 40 or an 80. It'll go out here, follow the yellow line. Comes out here, high lamp, headlamp, high beam, headlamp. Right and left or left and right, doesn't matter. Through this fuse, through this fuse, and through this high beam indicator which is in your dash to ground and that's how you get the high beam now one more important detail when I want to flash someone I'm not going through this dimmer switch I'm not going through this switch guess what I'm going through I'm going right through a, 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 a fuse bypassing this bypassing this switch going right here I'm Depressing a switch, going through here, and putting on the lights, the high beam and the high beam. And also, very important, high beam indicator. Now, there's a couple of things to note. We mentioned a uh, daytime running light control. There are sensors, photo sensors, resistors, photoresistor sensors, photosensitive resistors, where there's light, a photosensitive resistor is involved. And if it's light, it'll produce a, a voltage. Or sometimes if it's not lit, if there's no light, it knows it's dark. If it's dark, it'll send a signal to a module to turn on the lights. You could, now you're going to ask the question, but Joseph, why do you need daytime running lights? It's day outside, right? Well, let's say you're traveling daytime, but you're going to a tunnel. It's dark in that tunnel, isn't it? Even though it's daytime, right? Well, you need the lights to go on. And when the, what happens? It goes on automatic. How does it go on? Photosensitive sensors. Whenever something automatic happens, that means sensors are involved. Like Just like I got an email about wipers uh, going on automatic. That's, that comes from infrared lights, which is a sensor. They notice the, 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 the drops, the water drops. Turns on a, a sensor, infrared sensor, to turn on the wipers. Wherever something is automatic, that means a sensor is involved, a motion sensor, a light sensor. In this case, it's a light sensor saying, okay, there's no light. It's dark in this tunnel, right? You're going through the Lincoln Tunnel. It's dark. I have to turn on the lights for this customer, right? For the driver. That's that. Now, since we learn how this works, putting everything together, all the details together, I took the opportunity of putting 12 volts, labeling 12 volts over here. Wherever you see 12, 12 means 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts. Other thing is I took the opportunity of this position in this switch. So S1, S2, S3. Again, it could be the same switch with three, three different terminals, so to say. 
So position S1 is in, is in position 2, terminal 2. Position S2 over here is in position 3. And position S3, uh, yeah, switch S3 is in position terminal 3. That's the only way I can simplify it. Which ones are on, which ones are off. So in other words, when S1 goes to, again, position 2, parking lamps are on, dash are on. This is not connected, this is not connected. Position S2, for, for, for the switch S2, for position in, in 3, this is connected. And this is connected. So the parking lamps will be on. The parking lamps will be on and the hand lamps will be on. In low or high, depending on what you choose in this switch. Okay? Now... This goes to another part of another part of uh, a schematic, a triangle, remember? And this one, it goes to braking system. Now, some Ford, some, some cars, you have the lights on. You have to put the parking brake on. When you put the parking brake on, it gives you a ground and turns off the module, turns off the lights. That's electronic for you. Now... There's a new thing that I'm trying to, to adapt, a troubleshooting path of troubleshooting. If you're not f familiar with these schematics, I made a path where if you have a problem, no high beam, this is the path that you follow. You would follow, and I call these to make it easier, this is a fuse, F F41, F42, F48, and I gave them names. S3, S2, S1, for the sake of easier troubleshooting so therefore let's say you have no high beam the path of troubleshooting would be f41 and i call this one terminal one terminal two again terminal one is over here terminal two is over here goes through f48 terminal one terminal two goes through a switch when it's on terminal three then it goes to f5 which is another 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 fuse over here, and it eventually goes to the lamp. I call the H one. So what I'm doing here is F F F forty one, which is the fuse, should be twelve volts. The other side of this of the fuse, going into the fuse of F forty eight, and coming out should be also twelve volts. Twelve volts going into a switch S three, if would be called S three on the schematic, terminal three. Coming out of that switch, I should have 12 volts. Coming into a fuse, F5. Coming out of the fuse, I should have 12 volts. Going into the headlamp. Coming, going out of the headlamp, I should have 0 volts to ground. If the dimmer is involved, then I should have 12 volts in the dimmer. We'll go over it. So hopefully this will be much easier. And I'm going to introduce this new idea. And hopefully it'll help diagnose. Now... Customer came in and said, you know what? Problem. High beams do not work. First question, what do you ask? I asked, well, how about flashing someone with the high beams? Does that work? She said, I don't want to do that to another car. I didn't even try the, 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 uh, to flash someone. The passing flashing. I said, okay, why did I ask that? You'll see why when we start to troubleshoot. So customer is complaining. I asked, do the low beams work? She said, yes, it works. So far, we have a problem. High beams do not work. Do the high beams not work when I put the switch on? Or the high beams not work when I flash someone? What about the indicator? And this is why I have a point. High beam indicator on the dash. Is that lit when I flash someone or when I put the switch on? And that is a very important detail. So as you can see over here, 12 volts, 12 volts. Why do I have 12 volts over here? There's no voltage loss across the fuse. It's like a piece of wire. 12 volts here, 12 volts here. What about here? 12 volts here also. Why? No voltage drop across a piece of wire. What about here? 12 volts across this, like a piece of wire. Ignition, switch. Then 12 volts here, 12 volts here, 12 volts to this module. Now, going the other way, 
How much? How about, how about over here? 12 volts here. How much over here? 12 volts. Going this path. I'm going through this switch. How much? 12 volts. Out, out, going out of the switch. How much should I have? 12 volts. Why? It's just a piece of wire. And how about here? To this fuse, the other side of the fuse, also 12 volts. Why? Piece of wire. What about this one? A piece of wire. 12 volts. So, so far, 12 volts to the, to the parking lamps. What about this one? We go this path. 12 volts over here. 12 volts over here. 12 volts. Why? A piece of wire. No voltage loss. What about over here? Same thing. 12 volts. 12 volts. Why? Coming to fuse. Going out the fuse. 12 volts. 12 volts. And 12 volts. And here, sure enough, to the, to the bulb, you should get 12 volts. There's no, you did not lose any voltage. What about here? When I close the switch, 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts, going to these high beam. Now, when you look at this schematic, we ask yourself right away a detail. If I want to know if the high beams are working, right? The customer is complaining to me the high beams don't work. How do I attack it? I look, the first thing that I do is I go, I find the high beams, the bulbs, and I go back. The, the bulbs are right here, here and here. I go back. I backtrack. I see there's a connection here to high beam indicator. Okay, that helps me. But I want to find the path of B+. Plus. I know one side of the lamp will go to ground. Okay, that helps me, but I'm looking for B+. Plus. So I'm going to go back up here. There's a connection here also. Okay, photo sensor. That doesn't really help me because I'm looking for a B plus. Okay, there's a fuse. Okay, that makes sense. So B plus would go through a fuse. Let's continue. Let's go up here. Okay. A switch. Okay, let's go back up through another switch. That makes sense. It could go through a switches, right? Go back up here. We're going to go here. Follow it. Where is it going to? The module. That's not B plus. So let's go up here. Here is the connection. Go up here. Here is the B+. Plus. So I back probed. I started from here. 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 And this is what I need right here. That's how you follow the schematic when you're troubleshooting. Now, there's many paths I could take. When I go from the bulb, I go through the fuse. Again, I could go... Okay, high beam goes up here to the fuse. What about this connection? Well, that brings me to another high beam bulb. That's not B+. Plus. I need B+. Plus. B+, plus can go here. Yes, it can through the, through the, if you, for the flash. If you flash someone here, here, we can also go over here. But again, that brings me to the module. The only place over here is B+, plus in this direction. So you look at the, when you... And this is what I usually do. When I go back or I go forward, I usually get, take a gaze and I look at the main components in that direction. So in other words, if I'm going back up here, I look over here and I say, okay, okay, but that's not B+. Plus. I go up here and I say, that's not B+, plus either. I go up here and I say, uh, up here. And I go in this direction. I say, that's not B+. Plus. I go back up here and I said that's B plus. So somehow I follow it back up here, back up here, back up here, back up here. Okay? It takes practice. Now, again, first thing is I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flash it. What will that accomplish? If I flash it, there are two separate switches. I wanna know is this <clears throat> is is the problem the fuses? Is the problem the bul two bulbs are out? Hard to believe. Is the problem the switch, S3? Is the problem this one? I'm going to flash it. What is that going to tell me? Well, when I flash and I press this, I'm going to look for the two bulbs coming on, and I'm going to look for a high beam indicator on the dash coming on. So I press it. I press it. I close the circuit from here to here. I close it. And right away, I see both... Bulbs come on in high beam, and the indicator comes on. What does that tell me right away? That tells me the bulbs are good. The fuses leading to them are good. The indicator tells me everything is good as far as this circuit is concerned. 
So, I didn't even have to put a voltmeter. I didn't even have to put a fluke meter. All I did was pure analyzation of the schematic. I found two ways to cut it shorter, to cut down the trouble. This is what I mean by taking out schematic. It, it, it'll take you about 10, 15 minutes. You'll save time at the end, and you'll have happier customers. Now, again, I press this. I press this. Current flows here. Current flows here to the high beams. I know this is working. Before, I didn't know, I wasn't sure if these were working. I, I found the switch, I said, okay, I'll flash someone, it goes here. This is working. My problem could be here, my problem could be here. If my problem is here, what happens? I turn this on, I turn the switch on, S3, turn this on in low, and I see that the low headlamps are on, that means the switch is good in this position, Right? I'm looking for a couple of things. I'm looking for it to flash someone to tell me the high beams are on. I'm looking for this switch in the low position to tell me at least the, the, the switch is in the correct position for low. But when I go over here, I, I take this switch and I, and I move it to high to low, nothing happens. That tells me there's a problem with this switch. So therefore, I did not even have to take a meter. You'll never see this anywhere else on YouTube. I did not even have to take a fluke meter. Pure analyzation. The fact that this switch, this switch, the parking lamps are on and the low headlamps are on tells me that the switch is good in this position. The fact that this switch, when I activated this switch, it did not go from low to high, I know this is the problem. Why? Because everything else works through the flashing, through this switch, the flasher, when I press this. That means all of this part of the schematic is working. Now what I'm left with, I'm concentrating now on this part, these two parts. If I would do the flashing and nothing comes on, nothing, nothing comes on, that tells me it has nothing to do with this, that something is, is bad over here. And, and, and if I flash this and this doesn't come on, the indicator on the dash co doesn't come on, that tells me there could be a broken wire over here or this or this, a broken wire between here and here. Can it mean that this fuse is bad? No. If this fuse is bad, this high beam will still go on. If this fuse is bad, this high beam will still go on and the indicator will go on. So right now, I cut it down right away without even measuring nothing. Pure, like I said, pure analyzation of a schematic. I I put it. I cut it down to to the defective components that I think it is. You pay attention first. You analyze it, and you say, "How can I break the circuit?" I broke the circuit mentally by saying, "I have two paths." One path is the high path. When I put in a high beam with this switch, high, right? Activating this switch, and I got nothing. But when I put the flashing, I got something. So obviously, fuses are intact. The bolt bulbs are working. Bolt bulbs are grounded correctly. And the, the switch is good. What's not working has to be this or this. But the fact that I had low beams, tell me that this switch is good. If this switch would not, if this switch would be open, I wouldn't even have low beams. That's the main point of it, and that's why I said here's the path of troubleshooting. Right through the fuse, come out the other side of the fuse. 12 volts, 12 volts, S3 terminal, 12 volts. This one, like I said, you won't see this anywhere else on YouTube. So please subscribe to my channel. Um, automotive electronic schematics by Joseph and Joe Electronic Schematics for auto. Um, please go over uh, more uh, videos if you need to to understand, and it just takes practice and dedication. But like I said, this is unique way of troubleshooting things from a schematic, and it'll save you time. So thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next video.